President Joe Biden reversing a long-standing U.S. policy involving the war in Ukraine. Biden now going to allow Ukrainian forces to use long-range U.S. weapons inside of Russia for the very first time. CNN's Kevin Liptak is traveling with the president in Brazil. Kevin, what more are you learning? Yeah, this is a major change in American policy, and it comes at a critical point in the war in Ukraine as uh, Russian forces mass in the city and around the city of Kursk as they prepare for an offensive there, and as North Korea has sent thousands of its troops to fight alongside Russia in that conflict, President Biden making this decision to allow Ukraine to fire the American attack of missiles inside Russia for the first time. And this had been the subject of a long-running debate inside the American government about the wisdom of allowing Ukraine this new capability. There were officials who were concerned about the risk of escalation in this war. That's something that President Biden has been concerned about throughout the conflict. You also heard officials worry about the stockpiles of attack arms. These are not uh, resources in endless supply. At the end of the day, the addition of the North Korean troops to this conflict certainly has created a new sense of concern in Washington about where this war could be headed. Is this not the equivalent of tearing up the rental property before you leave? Before you hand the keys back over to the landlord? Man, I'm telling you, bro, this administration is the worst. This is the worst administration in my lifetime. They got handed over a golden goose and they basically put us in a, in a million wars, gave billions, if not trillions of dollars over, left billions of dollars over in Afghanistan when they abandoned it, put us in, in record inflation, destroyed the economy, and then handed the keys back over. And then they tried to give us a successor and give a person a promotion to make it 10 times worse. I, I don't know. And again, this is one of the reasons why, why I believe that it's going to be difficult for the first couple of years, putting things in a place. I wish Trump had eight years, eight more years in office. But we got J.D. Vance. We got Vivek Ramaswamy. We got Byron Donalds. We got uh, Tulsi Gabbard. We got a phenomenal lineup of people that's rocking out after him and with him. But my point is, is that are they not going all out before the end of this situation? Did Are they not just saying, hey, listen, we just going to destroy everything and every relationship before we can get out of office and make this thing 200 times worse than it's ever been. I don't know how we got so involved in something that didn't have anything to do with us at all in the first place. You know, when Trump, Trump highlighted during his campaign, he said, man, listen, day one, I'm going to end this war the day I get into office and yeah, I met with Zelensky and everything like that because Zelensky didn't even have any, you know, confidence in his current administration and that this would thing would ever end. We don't want endless wars straight up. We, we want to get back to the money. We want to have love, peace, hair grease, hanging out with people back and forth and all of this stuff. But these, ah, oh, Jesus Lord, not Biden. And then he was just up there standing next to, Xi Jinping over in China in the back waving like he's completely aimless. And, and I guess the warmongers on the Democrat side says, yeah, man, we just going to get way more out of this and just make it happen. This is insane, bro. It's a subject of conversation that President Biden has had throughout his trip this week in South America. He discussed it uh, earlier in Lima, Peru, with the leaders of Japan and South Korea. He also discussed it yesterday with the Chinese President Xi Jinping, uh, trying to apply pressure on Beijing to apply pressure on its largest, or, or on North Korea, which is China's uh, largest trading partner, to try and convince Kim Jong Un that this was a mistake and that it could put his own troops at risk. But now this decision, I think, um, certainly uh, for American officials, uh, they do hope that it could help uh, turn the tide in this conflict, but also send a signal to countries like North Korea that it sends its troops into this war at their own peril, Federica. All right, Kevin Liptak, uh, let us know. 
I've never seen so much incompetence in my entire life. It's almost like they're purposely trying to sabotage, you know, the next president, president-elect Trump, before they get in there. Hey, I wonder if Kamala Harris was in the room when they decided to make this decision. Whose decision was it to continue to participate in a war like this and then to just basically make a declaration of war all together? Who's this? It? Oh my God, this is so insane. When you know more, thank you so much. Joining me right now is CNN military analyst Colonel Cedric Layton. Uh, Colonel, great to see you. So, first off, explain what uh, these missiles are all about this Army tactical missile system, or sometimes referred to as ATACMS. Uh, talk to me about what they are, their capability, and why this is a potential turning point. Yeah, Frederica, the uh, MGM-148 TACMS, as you mentioned, the Army Tactical Missile System, has a range of around 180 to 190 miles. And what it can do is it can attack things like uh, ammunition depots, troop concentrations, uh, logistical centers, all of those kinds of things that could uh, resupply a front line. Uh, so what the purpose of this is, uh, from the Biden administration standpoint, is to actually make it possible for the Ukrainians to prevent the Russians and the North Koreans from attacking the Ukrainian concentrations in Kursk, which is the territory of Russia that Ukraine has occupied since. So, all right. World War Three, here we come. Uh, we just gonna go ahead and just declare it, just just destroy everything that we worked for, that we was looking forward to. Leave it up to a sleepy president that's standing up there waving like this and his hand going one mile an hour uh, to just absolutely just plunge us into some of the worst situations that we was trying to get out of in the first place. And whereas J.D. Vance and Trump was trying to employ diplomacy before they even got into office. We're going to have the most difficult next two months coming up, and we all going to be sitting on pins and needles over here in the United States of America while they play with their hand on the button that side of the office. And I'm wondering if Kamala Harris is hanging out in, in the Oval Office also saying, yeah, you know what? I think that this is a great idea. Let's just go ahead and plunge them in the territory. We're not going to forget this. We're not going to forget it. As y'all continue to make this the worst situation ever, we're not going to forget it as voters. I am going to be reminding people two years from now in the midterms, four years from now from, from in the next election, I am going, I have a long memory. And when I was documenting what was going on for this election coming up and I, I was hearkening back to 2021, you best believe I'm going to be hearkening back to 2024 when this next election coming up for the midterms. Y'all let me know what y'all think inside of the comments. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Obviously, I'm going to be talking about this. Uh, in the morning on the Millionaire Morning Show, but I had to come and kick it with you guys and let y'all know what was going on. I love you. I appreciate you. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Also, get your tickets December 14th. I'm going to be in Detroit speaking. Hopefully, we still got a country. Now, I'm going to be in Detroit speaking, and we're going to have a conversation. It's going to be great. I love you. I appreciate you. Let me know what y'all think inside of the comments. Jesus Christ.